But I'm here to tell you that taking on political scandal is nothing compared to what can happen if you raise questions about corporate power in Washington. When the producer Marty Kuhn and I started looking into the subject of pesticides and food for a frontline documentary, Marty learned that industry was attempting behind closed doors to dilute the findings of a National Academy of Sciences study on the effects of pesticide residues on children. The industry heard that we were poking around and mounted a sophisticated and extensive campaign to discredit our broadcast before it aired. Television reviewers and the editorial pages of key newspapers were flooded with allegations and innuendo. There was a steady whispering campaign, very hard to discern and therefore to confront. A columnist for the Washington Post took a dig at the broadcast and me without even seeing it and later admitted to me that the dirt had been supplied by a top lobbyist for the chemical industry who was his neighbor. The industry even prepared letters which some nervous public television executives signed and sent to PBS here in Washington protesting a film they hadn't even seen. My colleagues at PBS stood firm, even though some of those snakes were boa constrictors. The documentary aired, the journalism held up, and the National Academy of Sciences was emboldened to release the study the industry had tried to stifle. But even when you win one battle, the war goes on. Sherry and I then spent a year working on another documentary called Trade Secrets. This one was a two-hour special based on revelations found in the industry's own archives that big chemical companies had deliberately withheld from workers and consumers damaging information about toxic chemicals in their products. These internal documents were a fact. What they contained was not a matter of opinion or point of view. You could read right there in the industry's own records what the companies knew, when they knew it, and what they did with what they knew, which was to deep six it. The facts portrayed a deep and pervasive corruption in a major American industry affecting our health and safety and raised profound implications for public policy. So when the companies got wind of what we were doing, they sharpened their hatchets and went to work. They hired a public relations firm here in town noted for using private detectives and former CIA, FBI, and drug enforcement personnel to investigate competitors and critics. One of the founders of that firm is on record boasting that the use of unconventional methods, including deceit, is justified in behalf of his client. To say that they tried to smear the messenger is an understatement. To complicate matters, the single biggest congressional recipient of campaign contributions from the chemical industry was the very member of Congress whose committee had jurisdiction over public broadcasting's appropriation. We didn't use any public funds to produce that documentary, but that didn't spare PBS from another wave of ferocious pressure. Again, they stood firm, trade secrets aired, even I mean, every fact was documented and a year later, the National Academy of Television named it the Outstanding Investigative Documentary of the Year. Nowadays, journalists who try to dig up what's hidden still bring down on their heads the opprobrium of government and corporations, but they must also face the wrath of the right-wing media whose worldview is to see a liberal lurking behind every fact. As you know, journalism is under fire today from ideologues those true believers who have closed their mind to all contrary evidence and hung a sign on the door with the words, do not disturb. The journalist whose reporting dares to challenge their party line becomes a candidate for Guantanamo. Rush Limbaugh, notably, railed against journalists for their reporting on the torture at Abu Ghraib, which he dismissed as a little sport for soldiers under stress. He told his audience, quote, this is no different from what happens at the Skull and Bones initiation. You ever heard of people who need to blow off some steam? Well, yes, Rush, I have. They usually wind up as a talk show host. <laughs> the limbo line became a drumbeat in the right-wing echo chamber from which so many millions of Americans now get their news. So I wasn't surprised to read that nationwide survey by the Chicago Tribune 
in which half of the respondents said there should have been some kind of press restraint on reporting about the prison abuse. And just as many said they would embrace government controls of some kind on free speech, especially if it is found unpatriotic. Imagine free speech as sedition. Tell your students, silence is sedition. <laughs>